Welcome to this week's Hymn of the Week. This week we have ELW 521, O Day of Rest and Gladness. The text is uh, written by Christopher Wordsworth, and it was found in a collection titled Holy Year, 1862 collection of Wordsworth, and it was titled Sunday. And of course, this is a very general hymn, uh, hence it's in, put in the gathering section, and this case, I think the ELW categorized it correctly. It could be for any gathering tune on a Sunday. But what's interesting is we can see in the text how um, Christopher was reflecting. First of all, Sunday being Resurrection Day, uh, celebrating Jesus rising again. We see that, of course, uh, in the middle of verse 2, for our salvation Christ rose from depths of the earth. He's also reflecting on the seventh day of rest, as it states in Genesis, that God created six days, and then the seventh day he rested. So hence the title, O Day of Rest and Gladness, that we see in the hymnal here. So it's combining those two together. But I also think that as he thought about that, he was also reflecting on creation. Because we see that in the beginning of verse 2, on you at earth's creation, the first life had its birth. And then, on you for our salvation, Christ rose from depths of earth. So it brings a lot of these ideas together surrounding time and the significance of Sunday within the church year. So a great uh, text for that. Hence, probably found in the collection, Holy Year. This, at the end of the verse 1, we see, Sing holy, holy, holy to the great God triune. That reminds us of the sanctus that's often sung in the service or even spoken uh, during communion. And this tripartite, holy, 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 reminds us of one of the main reasons why we get together uh, to worship. Holy, 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 we're worshiping the Lord of hosts. The tune, Alicom, is an anonymous tune from the 18th to 19th century. Really, we think it came from the German Roman Catholics. It was found in this collection by Hartisch. The Vollständige Sammlung der gewöhnlichen Melodien zum Mainzer Gesangbuch. Very typical Deutsch, very German to have a long explanation and very detailed. But, but what that means is it's just a complete collection of the regular or everyday melodies of the Mainz Songbook. <laughs> this was in 1833. And it was paired with this text. Der du in Heils and Sacraments, which means uh, you, you who are the holiest sacrament, or you who are the holy sacrament. And so, obviously, it had a, rela a re um, relation to, our, to the Christian faith. And so, later, we believe Elicom was paired with an English name, maybe even a locality, and it was then found in the hymns Ancient and Modern in 1861. So we look at the form of this, and this is another tune that's great for learning if someone uh, just beginning to sing or uh, trying to teach this for anyone that just loves singing because it's A, A, B, A, and in lines two and four we have A prime, so we have the exact same as the first line, but instead of uh, going we go straight to the tonic. We keep the same chord. In fact, it's that really weird, um, <laughs> very strong um, theory term, perfect authentic cadence. So you're landing on the tonic note, since we're in the key of A, you're landing on that tonic note, so it's a perfect authentic cadence. And then in the first line with the C sharp, we have the in, uh, it's not a perfect authentic, uh, it's an authentic cadence here with the C-sharp on the third scale degree, but each line, one, two, and four, are ending in A, the chord A, and of course the dominant, in this case the E major, ends the third line. So if you're constructing a hymn tune, again, this is a great formula. Write your, get your phrase, make sure that phrase is correct, and you like it. Remember that you're gonna end that phrase with the third scale degree, and then create your third and fourth lines exactly the same, but now go, I'm sorry, second and fourth lines, and then go to the tonic, so the first note of the scale, and then create a different third line that somehow leads to the dominant key. Uh, 
or it lands on a dominant, we'll say. It sounds more complicated than you think, but actually it's not. Uh, it's a very easy way to compose a hymn tune. So maybe some of you will do that, and if you do, let me know. Um, I'd love to, um, to hear about it. Uh, so uh, of course you can let me know about that um, through my webpage, www.rmoorhead.com. But here we go. Here's O Day of Rest and Gladness. we see like tunes set in the century they're written and this is one of those ones that I think works really well. Elcombe is set with some other texts. I'm not so sure if it always fits as well. Uh, we have it matching with the Easter text and this one I think is maybe a better fit, O Day of Rest and Gladness. And we'll see that um, throughout hymnals where you know, the, those that are compiling them will try to match tunes from the same century approximately in what this was written. And so this is similar. Uh, it's, um, <laughs> it's close. Um, the German melody, of course, they say 18th century, but as we see in my notes, uh, it's really pointing probably um, to the 19th century. So who knows? It's anonymous, uh, but it seems like in this case they may have paired something uh, with the same century, and it works very well to sing. 
So I would like to thank um, Hal Hobson. I use his really sprightly, beautiful uh, idea for the beginning, and also use some ideas for Noel Rothstorn for the last verse. Thank you very much for listening to Hymn of the Week. <laughs>